Hey, it's time for our talk of the town today here on AM 1390 KRFO. Each time about this time of year in June, we talk to uh, Kim Cousins as we're getting set for the Harry Winger Marching Band Festival. Coming up on the 20th, starts at 11 o'clock, and I don't know, where do you want to start, to, Kim? Should we, should we just start off with just an overview about what it's all about, what folks are going to see? Oh, we sure, do sure we could. Thank you, Lauren, for the opportunity to be here today. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's always first time, hopefully first time people coming, so we can maybe give them a little preview. Absolutely, absolutely. There's so much information for people to know about the day. We're excited for the sixth annual. Hard to believe we're already up to the sixth mm -hmm. annual this year. But uh, the, the event begins officially at 11 a.m. And we have uh, three play zones. You know, we've got a play zone up there on Lincoln between uh, uh, Phelps and uh, University. Basically, if you think of in front of the Trinity Lutheran Church, that block right there is the first play zone. And then the second play zone is just a couple blocks farther down on Lincoln. It's between Academy and Agnes. That is a new location, so make sure you're looking for the, the big flags that mark each play zone. The directors had asked to have an additional block between those two play zones to help their kids get ready for that second one, and we were more than happy to oblige them. And then, of course, the, the hot spot, if you will, down downtown, the intersection of Elm and uh, Main Street is the judges zone, and that's where all the judging takes place, and uh, we're really, you know, looking forward to three great performance zones. People can sit in any of the three of them that they want to. And I don't know if I've been lucky, but I've, I've never had trouble finding a place to park. But, but is there any advice you have for someone who, if they want to find a parking spot? I've been lucky. I don't know. I would say just get there early. Okay. Look, the uh, city does a wonderful job of setting out cones and barricades to close the streets that need to be closed. But if you can get to another area and walk a few blocks to get to the place you want to sit, uh, then that's probably the best advice. Other than just to get there early. Like I say, there are no uh, reserve seats other than the patron event. The patron event down in the judges area obviously is just a wonderful opportunity for those folks. The reserve bleacher seats right there in the judges area. There's a nice brunch that's put on for those people. They get reserved parking downtown and they get a nice little thank you uh, gift from, from the festival as well for supporting us in that way. So we're just uh, really looking forward to a great group of people again this year. And each year, that sometimes there's long timers, or maybe all six years, we get a few new bands each year. Uh, Want to take a look at the lineup? And yeah, who's absolutely. Who's coming? We have three classes. You know, we've got uh, class A, class 2A, and class 3A, and those are divided primarily, Lauren, by the size of the band, the experience of the program. Okay, and so the smaller classes tend to be the smaller bands, not always, but maybe just a smaller town. So uh, in class A, starting off the the program this year is Dover Iota then Lake City, then KMS, which is, uh, stands for Kirkhoven Murdoch Sunberg. They're over on the southwestern part of the state, and Winona Cotter over on the southeastern part of the state. And uh, our Class 2A is Richfield, Henry Sibley, Malacca coming down again from way up north, and Maple Grove. And then our AAA is Waconia, the Mankato 77 Lancers, Champlin Park joining us this year. They've been trying to get into our festival for several years and we're able to make it work this year. And then uh, 728 Cadets based out of the Rogers, Zimmerman, and Lake Elmo area. And so that's going to be just uh, a wonderful, or not at Lake Elmo, Elk River, I'm sorry, uh, that area up there. And uh, that's going to be a great group of, of bands. And then our own Owatonna High School marching band will march through at the very end in exhibition so they get the benefit of the judges' mm -hmm. comments. They have three places they stop and play. I know I've never thought to ask this before. Are there guidelines as far as what they can play? Are they told that it's got to be two minutes or less? It's got to be this type of song? Or can you do whatever you want? That is a really good question and very timely. Uh, up until this year, there was no time limit as far as uh, how long you were going to play. But uh, there is a definite time limit now. Four minutes and 30 seconds. If you go over by uh, one second, you're penalized. If you go over up another 15 seconds, you're penalized. And if you go over by 30 seconds, you're disqualified. And so there are a series of, of new timing penalties that are instituted with this summer's competitive circuit. And those will be in play at our festival as well. We didn't institute those. Those were instituted by the bands themselves and by the, the judges association. So they're well aware of those new rules this year. As far as what songs they pick, the the 
whole world or universe is your choice. You can pick whatever you want to. You can uh, structure it however you want to. And that's kind of the, the fun part of being creative is you can pick whatever music. Or in, What we actually see now, Lauren, is a lot of these bands will have two, three, four different musical selections that they take pieces and parts of to put into this program that they do. Okay. I had no idea there's anything to do with timing. That was pure luck, wasn't yep. it, Steve? Good yeah. guess. Good yeah, question. I guess right. Um, and again, for those who haven't been here before, uh, the judges, it's a whole different thing from like every year I say the same thing. You, see, you think there's a couple of guys sitting in a, in a stage, but actually you got them going back and forth, recorders, notebooks. How do you become a judge? You have to have some kind of criteria or credentials. How do you become one of these judges? That's a wonderful question. I happen to be a, a judge myself, and I, I uh, do quite a bit of, of judging of marching bands. Most of the work that I do is in the fall, field show season, but these folks have the same type of an accreditation. Basically, you have several years of successful teaching or instruction in the marching arts, where your program has been recognized as one that's truly outstanding. And then you uh, are probably asked to come in and, and meet with the Judges Association, and then uh, they find some opportunities to kind of get your feet wet, maybe some of the, the smaller, lesser known opportunities where you can sit in and, and observe judges and how they do their criteria, how they work. And finally, you're given a chance to do it yourself and if you're successful, you're asked back. And so I've been judging for, oh, I suppose 20 years or more now. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity to provide input and feedback to these programs and the marching arts and, and encourage these kids to keep working hard because the programs just get better and better every single year, Lauren. Now, for, <coughs> excuse me, for us lay people, we, we have no idea for sure what goes on on the tape recorder or your notes. Right. Could you give us just a make-believe mock of what we might hear? It's like, oh, that's terrible. Oh, number six, third row. Is it, well, what, what, what might we hear or see? Sure, absolutely. Well, let's, let's say that I happen to be the, uh, the visual execution judge that day. That means I'm going to be down on the street in amongst the kids, moving all around all sides of the band as they work their way through the judge's zone. I'm going to be carrying a recording device. And that recording device, I'm just going to give a, a running commentary of what I'm seeing. So, for example, I might say uh, front row looking very strong. I like the posture. I love the uniformity and the placement of the foot. The ankle uh, is exactly at the angle that it needs to be. As I look back down this third file over here, we've got a cover problem. About four people back needs to make sure you're covering down, lining up your necks, kids. Make sure that we're straight file front to back. I might come around. I might say excellent uh, carriage by the trumpet section. Great uniformity in the bell position there and then I might say oh and the horns were really struggling over here we've got a bell that's very droopy pointed towards the ground we need to make sure that that angle of that instrument is up I might make comment that uh, we've got some pants that are too long we've got bunching of fabric around your ankles or I might say you know what these are easy problems to fix kids all we have to do is take a look make sure there's no break in that seam of that leg it's an easy fix it's something you can fix before your next competition etc so I might try to make comments that are very specific but things that are very fixable between wow. then and the next performance. That was good. That I, I had no I had no idea. I mean, when, like I said before, when I was in band, if we we all, our goal was to make a letter A. Sure. <laughs> and sure. We did, oh, we did a great job. Right. Right. I had no idea that we involved the pants and you know the, your bell is droopy and stuff like that. Yeah, instrument angles, posture, okay. everything is coming into play. Those who aren't in band or haven't been in for a long time probably weren't aware of stuff like that. Right. We're right. We're talking to Kim Cousins, the Harry Wenger Marching uh, Band Festival is coming up on the 20th, and of course you always uh, single out an individual and pay, pay special tribute, and this year. This year it's Mr. Berlin Staska. You know that's a name in the music world here in in Owatonna that most people know. Berlin's played in in uh, old time bands for gosh probably 50 years or more, and uh, in fact it's probably longer than that. And he does a great tribute uh, at a lot of funerals where he plays taps. He's still involved with the community band here in town. And so one of our goals each year is as we pick a person to honor is somebody who has had an impact on instrumental music specifically in the Owatonna area and the promotion of instrumental music. And so we're really pleased that Berlin accepted our invitation to be our Grand Marshal this year. Okay. And again, it's coming up on the 20th, starts at 11. Uh, let's just go over the, the three places where they play again. One has changed a little bit. Absolutely. The first play zone is up there in front of Trinity Lutheran Church. That's on Lincoln between University and Phelps. The second one is there on Lincoln between Academy and Agnes. Again, that's the new location. So in all three, just be looking for the big flags. You'll, you'll be able to see where they are and sit between those. And then the judges area continues to be at the intersection of Maine 
and Elm Street. I do just want to take two seconds and, and thank my board. Uh, we've got an outstanding group of people that work very, very hard to put this festival on. Uh, I also want to thank the, the many patrons who choose to come out and support us and enjoy the festival, as well as the business community and the sponsors that help support the festival. Our main sponsors, Oatana People's Press, hy V and the Wenger Foundation. We couldn't do any of this without any of those people. The patron event does start at 9.30. Tickets are still available. You would need to contact Ann Miller at 451-3400. Single tickets, $70. Couples, $125 if you're interested in being a patron for the Harry Wenger Marching Band Festival. Have we ever done any like number counts or guesstimates as far as how many people will come we to have. Oatana? We have. We've done a lot of estimates and guesstimates and rough counting and I'd say we're easily in that 5,000 north of 5,000 uh, area and it continues to grow every year. Yeah, in fact you have so many bands that want to come back. Anything else that we missed or you'd like to say or talk about about the festival, Kim? Well, we are uh, we're adding a, a new announcer this year. John Connor from right out here at KRFO is going to be our announcer both at the downtown area and then over for the awards this year. So we're looking forward to wel welcoming John to our festival. Okay. I think you should have March the route before he goes up on stage. That would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you heard me say that. Okay. Again, that's the Harry Wenger Marching Band Festival. That's coming up on the 20th, starting at 11 o'clock. And that's our Talk of the Town for today here on AM 1390.